Hello, everybody. This is Richard R.J. Escal for The Zero Hour. You know, two heroes of mine died this weekend. Jimmy Breslin, the great New York Daily News columnist and writer, wrote a lot of feature stuff, wrote novels, everything. Jimmy Breslin died this weekend. And, of course, Chuck Berry. You know, those two guys, I don't want to be one of those people that tries to link different kinds of lives and deaths together just because they died at the same time. But there's some there's some through line there. First of all, they were both heroes of mine. I tried to learn to play guitar like Chuck Berry. If I had a guitar with me, I, I'd show you. You know, I didn't get the essence. I, I There's a feel there that I think really only Keith Richards got as well as... Uh, as Chuck Berry did, and even then it was it was his own take on it. But uh, Chuck Berry, obviously a uh, fantastic writer, as well as a fantastic songwriter and guitar player, musician, um, and Jimmy Breslin, tough, punchy, direct, brilliant writer. But both those people wrote about ordinary human beings living ordinary lives, because I think they both realized on on some level, probably consciously in Jimmy Breslin's case, and not so much so in Chuck Berry, but I think that they both realized that no life is ordinary. No everyday event is ordinary. I mean, Jimmy Breslin is the genius who, uh, when everybody was writing about the assassination of John F. Kennedy, interviewed his and profiled the man who dug his grave. Uh, he always had a way of taking on a story in a human way, as well as on the broader implications of it. And Chuck Berry, look, I mean, I could recite for you a million Chuck Berry lyrics that were uh, great as poetry and writing. And uh, by, by the way, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, Bob Dylan, says he was inspired by him. Dylan's subterranean homesick blues was, according to Dylan himself, based on Chuck Berry's Too Much Monkey Business, and you can certainly hear it, you, you can certainly make the connection. So, uh, you know, and I always liked Nadine myself, you know, just because it had those great lines, you know, I ran through the crowd trying to get to where she's at. I was campaign shouting like a Southern diplomat and all that, uh, moving through the traffic like a mounted cavalier leaning out the taxi window trying to make her hear. So both those people had a great, gift for bringing life to life with words. And of course, Chuck Berry, master musician and great dancer at the same time, playing guitar and duck walking. So both those guys are gone. Who do we idealize now? The guys who founded Uber, tech billionaires, Mark Zuckerberg. Honestly, it's kind of pathetic by comparison. So I just have a couple quotes that I want to leave you with before we go. Uh, first of all, I also want to remind uh, folks of the death of another music great, James Cotton, harp player, singer, band leader. He accompanied Money Waters and, um, you know, the Beatles and Rolling Stones brought Chuck Berry back to a lot of Americans' attentions, brought Muddy Waters to the attention of white rock and roll kids for the first time. Uh, James Cotton played harmonica for uh, Muddy Waters and was also a great uh, band leader in his own right. So Jimmy Breslin, first of all, I uh, I wanted to, to quote him. Uh, he said at one point, there have been many Jimmy Breslins because of all the people I, I identified with so much, turning me into them or them into me, that I can't explain there's one Jimmy Breslin. So, you know, he really, he, he really uh, brought himself into the lives of the people he wrote about. It made me think of um, the writer Susan Sontag, who said uh, at one point, what I really wanted was every kind of life, and the writer's life seemed the most inclusive. Well, you know, you could say that about Chuck Berry, too. He wrote about young married people, anyway, were almost grown, say la vie, say the old folks, it goes to show you never can tell. He wrote a, a, about the fantasy of a flying Cadillac, a flight de ville, as they called it. Uh, that was the song, You Can't Catch Me. The guitar player from the old psychedelic band, It's a Beautiful Day, taught me a different way to play the guitar, like on that, by the way. So a lot of memories coming back with the loss of these two people. And I will close with the words, Jimmy Breslin, who is a practicing Catholic, wrote a book uh, about the sex scandal in the Catholic Church called The Church That Forgot Christ. 
And he wrote this, you know, everybody, every writer, I think when they're writing about something gets a lot of books on the topic they're reading about. So I'll close with this. Jimmy Breslin wrote in that book, uh, The Church That Forgot Christ, he wrote, as I, as I write, I have beside me stacks of books about Catholicism that become higher each time I go out for a walk and pass a bookstore. Then he explains that the books are dry. Uh, the one book, however, I could not wait to read was about Mary Magdalene, whom I believe to be the best of anything Christ had around him. She went to the last mile while all those men ran like dogs. They call her a prostitute, a whore. Some whore, the last person walking with Christ. With any luck, you'll know you're near heaven when you get a glimpse of her telling people what to do. A whore owns half of heaven. That was Jimmy Breslin. A lot of heart, a lot of soul, and we are going to miss him as well as Chuck Berry and James Cotton. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow for the Zero Hour.